And again, what it feels like is to trust the innocence more than you trust what you think that you know. And you trust your state of being innocent more. You trust in that more. You find your safety in being innocent more than you focus on or insist upon an outcome or a certain safety in a certain way out there. You trust in the safety of your own innocence, of your own softness, of your own surrender. And in that softness, in that surrender, in that humility, in that openness, you can begin to become that receiving force, that satellite dish, which will greatly empower you. Paradoxically, it is the humility. It is the surrender of knowledge. It's the surrender of rigidity. It's the surrender of expectations. It's the surrender of judgment. That makes you the embodiment of love once again. So how can I, because right now I don't have a partner. So how can I yes. surrender to God? H how is to surrender to God? Yes, surrender to God. You can symbolize God as, as a masculine. That might be helpful in your particular, in this particular exercise or from this angle. See. So if you picture God as the masculine, the omnipresent, all-encompassing, ever safe, ever loving, ever fierce, ever protective, ever guiding, ever supportive, ever providing all-encompassing masculine force of all that is. And you surrender to that image, to that sense, to that feeling that can definitely assist you. And it would align your energies. It would put you in a more healthy feminine state that's more balanced. It would take away the unnatural false masculine qualities that perhaps you have trained into your system as a compensatory reaction to the way society is and what you've taught, been taught and all that stuff. So in the, at least in the privacy of your own internal reality, you can fully surrender safely to your sense, your symbol of God, as this omnipresent, ever reliable, trustworthy, masculine force that's got everything covered for you. And if you practice that, the energies are the same. They will open up. This will allow you on a relative level to attract more balanced male forces into your life where you can then begin to practice that, exercise that and enjoy that on a physical level. And of course, a relational, emotional, spiritual level. Yeah, exactly. I want to really be a feminine, pure. That's what. Yes, okay, a lot so... of. A lot of females desire that, but don't know exactly how to do that in this society. Mm. And I don't blame them for that, but it is important that they find a way to do that for the sake of all of us. And, uh, and it's important for the males to become <clears throat> more truly and holistically masculine, mm -hmm. which will both will support each other in making it easier. The feminine being purely feminine will make it easier for the masculine to be truly masculine and the masculine being truly masculine will make it easier and safer for the feminine to be truly feminine. So I do believe in those polarities up to a certain density, up to a certain level of consciousness that applies. Beyond that, there's only genderless unity and pure life force and so forth. But on many levels of our day-to-day -day experience, many levels of consciousness, there is a polarity between masculine and feminine force. At least that's what we've called it, the pluses and the minuses. And the dance between them does produce the greatest electricity, the greatest ability to do work, the greatest ability to ascend and to transform and to transmute and to alchemize. So I do believe in the classic image of masculine and feminine, but it needs to be balanced. It needs to be made clear and enlightened and, and spiritual so that it can actually be a true balance and not uh, this distorted thing that we see often around us today. But if you can find the courage to practice this with God in the privacy of your own metaphysical inner reality, it doesn't have to include any physical man per se. Also don't reject it. Don't turn God into an image and, and say all men are, are bad or are insufficient and only God matters. Try to, from that God state, include everything in your devotion, everything in your surrender. However, the first and foremost is that you have, the easiest way to do this probably is for you to have an image, 
a sense, a symbol of God as this all pervasive, all supportive, masculine, 100% pure, trustworthy, reliable force and to surrender to that. That will get you into the energy of what surrender is, what it truly feels like, devotion to God and so forth. And that will put you, restore you to your true feminine essence. And it will reveal to you the masculine traits that you've adopted that may not be, it's not bad to have some masculine balance in you as a woman, not at all, but you will see where you have sort of toxic or copied masculine traits because of societal conditioning, where they are distorted and they, these will fall away when you find a trustworthy masculine. And I suggest you start with God, not at the expense or rejection of a masculine men or men in general, but as an initial starting point to deepen your surrender, to trust your femininity and to activate that energy, which is healing for this planet and healing for you. And then the law of attraction will bring you practice partner or partners to exercise this with, to apply this to the human level as well, and to uh, hopefully balance out yourself and the earth in this particular way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like the problem that I have yesterday, that just because it's a man and I didn't surrender, I, it was making me feeling like guilty, like uh, I should surrender, but you have to well, choose. Well, definitely not. Let me just be clear on this. Who? Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately. Yes. I, I, <clears throat> I would not feel good about saying just surrender to every male that, <laughs> that you are like, he's a man and he's going to kill me now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, use your, <laughs> still use your <laughs> discernment. But that's why I say start practicing this in the privacy, in the, in the safety of your own relationship to God, okay? Because you, energy and the universe and your brain, they don't recognize the difference. What matters is that you learn to activate that energy. And when you do that, you will begin to attract males that are a closer and closer representation of the pure feminine that you're radiating out. They will find that a complementary force that law of attraction will bring these males to you that are ready to kind of play with that. Doesn't mean they're 100% perfect. Doesn't mean they're 100% an embodiment of what I'd like to call the Omega men. Maybe more on that later, bit of a new concept, but, but they will be closer to that representation and they will allow you to learn and to practice and to have fun and to enjoy and to, you know, learn more and ascent more. Um, but it's definitely not, I've never recommended and never will that a woman just blindly surrenders to any, uh, <laughs> any male that makes an advance on her. So okay. please don't feel guilty for not surrendering. Now, if it was a beautiful opportunity and there was a lot of synchronicity and there was a lot of excitement involved and there was a pure resonance there and you still blocked it out, then yes, that is a blockage in you to look at. But if it was just some random, yeah. random guard at the, uh, by well, a random guy at the bar, <laughs> random by at the mm -hmm. car, then, um, yeah, please don't feel guilty about that. But was it law of attracted into your, of course, everything is, but was it like a resonance? No, 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 completely. No, he was out of his mind. He was uh, mad. He was just like, boom. And I was like, no. Like, yeah, good, good choice. <laughs> like, uh, it was just like, boom. Yeah, <clears throat> now what you, what you can do, but first things first is like definitely don't quote unquote surrender to that, at least not on a relative level. Now what you can do with practice is from the background, from that non-dual divine understanding, you can still send complete love to that entity, to that being, but it's an impersonal love. And you could say that's a surrender to the God in him, even though the human is very confused, right? So you can still send that love. You can, in that sense, you can surrender to every person that you meet, male or female. You can surrender to the God in them, but that doesn't mean on a relative level that you engage with them physically or that you allow them into your house and so forth. So you still want to use discernment on the human level, but from the depths of your heart, you can still send them love while you reject their presence in your physical. You can walk away and send them love in your heart 
from your heart. Does that make I sense? I did actually. I did actually. Okay. And also when I meditate today, I was sending so much love to that because, you know, it's work and everything, you know. And so I just, I did actually, I did not naturally. Okay. So I, I am a super clear. Thank you for, for that. Like what a masculine energy is like is uh this supportive this clear this uh, okay now the feminine how how it feels the feminine to <clears throat> energy to you to the feminine itself mm. let me change gender real quick one second the highest state, it feels like being a re receiver or receptacle for God's energy, receiving God's energy. And I say at the highest level, because this means that in your heart of hearts, you actually equate yourself to being equal to God in power, in worthiness and deservability. So at the highest level, there's no seeking for anything. There is a total receptivity or loving embrace of whatever comes your way, knowing yourself as God, you could say as the divine feminine aspect of a God, and you are actually receiving a God itself and allowing the impregnation of creation to occur in your metaphysical womb. In other words, in your receptivity. That receptivity comes from an unshakable confidence or courage. Well, not even courage, courage initially, but once the goal has been accomplished, it means that in the back of your mind, you equal yourself to God, maybe even higher than God in a way because you're receiving God. So it's the experience of being so vast being so sure, being so indestructible that there's complete receptivity. And we could call this vulnerability or openness, but there is really nothing vulnerable about it at the highest level. The initial steps might feel vulnerable, but I'm just starting from the highest level, which is a fully realized feminine presence would have no fear would not be seeking for that support. In fact, she would be the support. And in her receiving of God, in all of its manifestations, in all of its desire to create, to produce creation, in being a receiving force of that, a receptacle sounds a little weird, but then everything that needs to be created and provided for will be provided for. But it's different than seeking for support, although that's a valid initial step, and I, I might get to that in a second. But again, just staying a little bit longer with the highest level, there is no longer a seeking from a vulnerability, from an insecurity, from a feeling physically vulnerable. If we're identified with the physical body, if we associate the feminine aspect of God only with the female body, which is 
in general, not always, but in general, upper body is uh, more fragile, less strong, muscularly speaking, than the masculine. If we associate through that filter, we'll always feel a little bit, not inferior per se, but um, vulnerable. And this vulnerability comes from body consciousness. It comes from body identification, body association. Now in that state, yes, there seems to be relevance to finding that support. But really, the feminine is the support of the masculine. The masculine is not the support of the feminine. Although, on a relative level, if there is a balanced masculine and feminine equation, then the masculine will provide and protect that physical vehicle of the feminine. But it's not really support, it's more protection and provision and direction. You are the support. You are the support of the masculine. That is the surrender. That's the receiving. It's kind of like being a satellite dish energetically. It's the energetic version of a satellite dish. That's what I mean with receptacle. Again, it's not the best word, but you're receiving information. You're receiving impregnation. You're receiving creation. You're receiving God in all of its manifestation. And the deeper your confidence and your knowledge of I am the divine, I am God, I'm indestructible. I'm not just the body, I'm not just the mind. That's included, I love that, but it's not who I really am. I am beyond this, I'm indestructible. I'm the indestructible feminine receiving power of this universe, I'm the support, I'm the basis. If you can tap into that more and more and more, you will find you're no longer seeking for support, you will be the support. And in that frequency, yes, you will receive protection, you will receive guidance, you will receive direction and specificity and particularization, you will receive provision for whatever your physical body needs, but you are the support, the feminine is the support. It's the basis, it's the space, the void in which the subatomic particle, if you will, can speed up and rotate and find direction of the masculine. So you are the support for the masculine. And at the highest level, that surrender, therefore, actually feels like a total confidence. But that's only possible if you have seen beyond the physical body's identification sufficiently enough. Until that time, so now I'm stepping it down a little bit, yeah? Until that time, there will be the desire to seek stability in the masculine. And it's not necessarily wrong. And if you find a good masculine force and you are willing to surrender and be vulnerable, again, vulnerability is an illusion, right? But within the illusion, you have to be willing to be vulnerable as long as that's part of your experience. So if you find a good masculine force that is trustworthy, then at some point you do have to begin to trust that force. Otherwise you cannot practice as easily the surrender and you cannot attain to the divine feminine that I just described, which is more like the space of the universe, that loving receiving space that gives life and impregnates or allows the impregnation that gives the fertile soil for the impregnation to occur, that supports everything that wants to flourish, everything that God wants to accomplish, everything that God wants to create and realize about itself. You enable that, you support that, you empower that by your support, by your receptive mode by your co ultimate confidence. But again, in order to get there, you oftentimes how we practice that quite naturally is through surrendering to the masculine. And so initially, when you don't have that indestructible confidence just yet, you do feel it at some level, you do know it's there, but you're still identified also on the service with the human self. And it's fine, it's perfectly normal. So when that component of the human vulnerability still is a part of your experience, you have to just be willing to surrender and uh, at your own pace and of course to a safe source. But once you know that it's a safe source, it's a reliable source, at some point you have to begin to trust it a little bit more in order to practice this. Because if you don't, then it's just, you're just um, blocked and you don't use that opportunity. So at that level of the human level, it's a bit more of a delicate balance, but if you trust in the process and you attract such a stabilizing, energizing force into your life, 
then you can begin to surrender your vulnerability, which simply means feel vulnerable until that begins to feel more indestructible. And it's greatly liberating when you first start to open up in that way and start to be vulnerable because it is through your vulnerability being allowed that you will begin to realize this indestructibility. And there's no more potent way to do this than, or more, no, more, no more tangible way to do this than with a masculine force. It's just the most tangible. It's just the most in your face. It's just the most confronting. It's the most accelerated, right? So it's also a little bit scary, but that's a healthy sign. If it's a little bit scary, you know you're already considering this particular person and there's already safety and a trust there. Otherwise you wouldn't even consider it. If it's just this random dude at the bar, that's like drunk and like coming on to you. Obviously you're not really considering even surrendering in that sense. So if you're even considering it and it feels a little bit scary because you're considering it, it's already a good sign. You're already on a deeper level. You already trust this person enough. Again, they might not be 100% perfect. That'd be very rare, but they will be sufficient <laughs> representatives of a genuine masculine force for you to practice your vulnerability in so that you can realize your indestructibility through that. And what that feels like initially, not speaking from the ultimate level just yet, but initially is a greater trust in your innocence, your softness, your surrender, being innocent again, preferring being innocent and humble and not knowing over knowing, which is kind of a masculine force, which often gets distorted in women out of fear and justified out of fear. It's like, no, I know, I know what's best for me. Maybe you don't always. So if you prefer the surrender to your innocence, just the innocent state of not knowing, the innocent state of humility, you start to immediately soften. You can feel it in your body. You can feel it in your spine. You can feel it in your brain. You can feel it in your organs, you can feel it in your heart. And the softness begins to open the body, be begins to open the channels to where you become more receptive to that ultimate version of the feminine, which is indestructibly fearless and confident, equal to God. No longer in need of support, she is the ultimate support of all that wants to be birthed into creation. But again, before that point has fully been accomplished or close to fully been accomplished. There is a different kind of phase where yes, on a human level, there needs to be some surrender to that vulnerability. And again, what it feels like is to trust the innocence more than you trust what you think that you know. And you trust your state of being innocent more, you trust in that more, you find your safety in being innocent more than you focus on or insist upon an outcome or a certain safety in a certain way out there. You trust in the safety of your own innocence, of your own softness, of your own surrender. And in that softness, in that surrender, in that humility, in that openness, you can begin to become that receiving force, that satellite dish, which will greatly empower you paradoxically. It is the humility. It is the surrender of knowledge. It's the surrender of rigidity. It's the surrender of expectations. It's a surrender of judgment that makes you the embodiment of love once again. So what, about if I, <clears throat> what about if I attract so much with this innocence? No fear. Feel no fear to attract that much. Can you say that again? I didn't quite get that. Uh, to don't have fear. What about if I attract more than I want with the sensation of innocent? What do you mean attract more than you want? I, I felt what you are telling me. Just is something that instead of my energy to be like this, it's just more like inside and more 
innocent, like more vulnerable. And I feel like that attract more of the masculine. And I don't know if I want that uh, that yes. attention. Well, you, do, you do need to have high standards to practice this, mm. which again means you got to be discerning. And it's true. And it's a good point you bring up. Um, if you do begin to radiate this innocence, uh, yes. almost virtually all men, no matter how many problems mm. they still have running around their minds, will be greatly attracted to that because they all yes. seek that. They all seek uh -huh. that liberation and they seek that nourishment and mm. not at a fault of their own per se. Like that's just the way nature is programmed. And they also have a tough life typically. So they mm. seek that nourishment. They seek that innocence and not every man is ready to handle that with integrity or with clarity. They're just mm -hmm. not ready for that. So what I was talking about was from the perspective of already having found someone that you trust and within that container, practicing the innocence and the surrender, because otherwise you never will practice that. If nobody's ever good enough for you, then that's another fault. And that's another sort of uh, protective barrier that just shoots yourself in the foot. So there does have to be some openness, right? There has to be some risk involved. You have to be willing for your heart to be broken on a human level. If you're not willing to do that, then forget about it. If you're not willing to have your heart broken, not that that needs to happen, but I'm saying if you're not willing to take that risk, to t step into the uncertainty, then you're definitely not willing and uh, ready to be the divine feminine, which has absolutely no fiercer considerations. She is receptive <clears throat> to all energies, still discerning on a human level, still smart on a human level. But I was speaking more strictly within the safe container of being with a man that you already trust, that you know is trustworthy. Maybe okay. not, you know, and God's my, perfection. But. Sorry. And in my day by day? In your day by day, you kind of, um, yep, it's tricky. And this is where I think it's very important that the masculine gets educated because it will make it easier for the feminine to blossom and radiate this innocence all the time. But it's a little bit tricky going out there, uh, admittedly, and being fully open in this way. So, one second. It's okay for now, it's okay to not radiate that out everywhere you go. Okay. Does that make sense? It's okay to shield yourself a little mm -hmm. bit. Just remember when you're back, in the comfort and safety of your own house. Mm -hmm. Remember to open back up to God as that all pervasive, all supportive, all trusting, natural force, that masculine force, and or with the partner that you've attracted that you trust. Soften those barriers again. Really, if you wanna put up your shields when you go out there, or if you have to sometimes, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But just minimize the amount of time that you need to do that. See. Do it discerningly, do it with wisdom, and do it consciously, not identifying with it, just realizing, okay, I'm in public. I understand what's going on. If I start radiating like a fucking divine fragrant flower here, then uh, shit's going to hit the fan. And I'm, <laughs> yes. Now it can't, in certain situations that can be a beautiful gift that you offer. So if you feel safe enough in the environment where you are, you could try it and see what happens. But if you know, you know, if you're walking around the streets by yourself and it's like, you know, 10 PM, See, um, don't, yes, don't I'm... do that. Maybe. <laughs> um, so it's okay. It. It's okay to shield yourself. It's okay to make yourself a little bit more invisible when you're going out into the matrix, especially mm -hmm. depending on the context and the situation. Uh, that's okay for now. That's relatively smart. That's relatively speaking wise for now. I mean, times are changing, but it may still take some time for that to be totally safe everywhere you go. But imagine the beauty of that. Imagine women all around the world being able to, wherever they go, whenever, whatever time of day, whatever city, whatever area of the planet, where they could just radiate that complete receptivity and that complete trust and openness. It'd be <sighs> gorgeous and it'd be very balancing for the masculine and be very balancing for the feminine and be very balancing for the earth. But for now, I would be um, irresponsible to say, just do this everywhere you go. 
So it's totally okay to shield yourself, but do it more consciously. Don't believe that's who you are. You're not that quality of shielding. It's not necessary. You don't need to thrive in that in that society. You don't need to become masculine and shielded uh, as sort of something to show off with and then call that equality and all that bullshit. You want, you want to ascend to the true feminine. You want to balance yourself into the true feminine. That's my suggestion. For the most part, practice that when you're in the safety of your own home, when you're in the safety of a partner that you trust, friends that you trust. Um, and that's enough. Like for the most part, that's what you should spend time with anyway. If you're spending the majority of your time walking around the matrix, um, I'm not sure why you would be doing that, but mm -hmm. right. So for the most part, you can practice completely opening your heart and um, surrendering totally to God. And then you will attract better and better and safer and safer situations and people. But still, if you're going out and it doesn't feel safe, by all means, put up a shield, make yourself a little invisible, you know, and just don't stay there too long. Why would you? Send love from the background, but don't necessarily open all your energy centers right there in the streets. So it's okay to temporarily shield yourself. Just do it consciously. Know that it's not who you are. It's a mechanism that's now, for now, seemingly needed. And it's okay. You can still send love from that non-dual place. As a woman, you can shield yourself a little bit until you're back home, but just make sure you put that shield down, make a conscious effort so it doesn't linger in your field and you don't project it onto your partner and you don't bring it into your own energy. You don't go to sleep with it. Like take your, just like you take your clothes off before bed, assuming, also take your um, shield down when you come back home, when it's no longer needed. Make that actually something that you know to do. Like. You don't, you're don't. you not just wearing your physical clothes. You're also wearing your thoughts around you. You're also wearing your protection around you. And as a woman, that's very unhealthy. So find an environment to live in where for 80 or more percent of the time, you can be completely unshielded and you know it's going to be safe. Be my Lovely. Yeah. So clear. <laughs>